Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special weekend episode of Every Rock Has a Story. Today's story is about volcanoes. Today, we're going to make a volcano connection in some ways that might surprise you. And I have to start, therefore, with a rock that tells the story of a great, great volcanic eruption, an eruption much bigger than the eruption of Mount St. Helens that I talked about in our last couple of videos. This is the rock of the day. And I'll bring it closer. This is a rock from a real volcano that I'm going to tell you about. Let me bring it closer so you can see. This rock is mostly white, but it's got lots of little things in it. It's got a lot of air holes, bubbles. There used to be gases in those bubbles. See them all? Volcanic gases. And it's also got these bits, those dark gray and light gray bits or fragments of other little volcanic rocks, different shapes and sizes. Oop. There's my label, so that C tells me where it came from. And number 31, that means it's the 31st sample I collected from that place that I know. That C stands for the state of California. And California is where there was a great eruption. 767,000 years ago, before any people, but not actually that long ago in geologic time. And during that great eruption, right near the town of Bishop, California, the eruption was so big that it, it blew a giant hole, a giant crater out of the earth. And lava, and especially ash, and flows of volcanic debris, ash and bits and rock, flowed out of the volcano, leaving that great hole behind. That hole that got left behind is called a caldera. That's a volcanic crater or hole. And we call that Long Valley Caldera today. But this is the stuff that volcanic ash and debris and bits of rock that went flowing out in what we call a pyroclastic flow, a hot flow of hot, 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 flaming volcanic debris. This rock can actually get a couple different names, but the name I want you to know is this one. This is what we call tuff, volcanic tuff. And it's a mixture of ash and other volcanic rocks and debris that comes strewing and flowing out of that volcano at high velocity. Do you know that this eruption, 767,000 years ago, that left behind the great Long Valley Caldera, it blew ash as far as Nebraska and the Pacific Ocean. Did you know that in the 10 or so miles surrounding the, vol the volcanic caldera, there were layers of volcanic tuff like this as thick as 600 feet? Now that is a big eruption. I might have some other stories to tell you another time about even bigger eruptions in the earth, but I'm not gonna get into that today. But I do wanna tell you about a connection. We're gonna make a volcano connection today because this rock actually relates to a lot of the stories of the other rocks we've been telling. In fact, I'll give you a challenge right now and I'll give you an example. I challenge you to watch any two of my videos about any two of these rocks, any of them. And I challenge you to find a way to make a connection between those two rocks. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's tricky, but I bet you can always find connections between things even if they seem like they're different. Well, let me give you this example. This volcanic tuff, I'm gonna put aside for a second. Do you remember the volcano fuel? What's the fuel for volcanoes? It's water. So I wanna start by talking about that ocean water, that salty sodium and potassium rich salt water. Remember what happens in the ocean. That water can get down into our peridotite. And if we add water to the peridotite below the ocean in the mantle, we make Serpentine right here, that's our water rock. And also, not only do we make serpentine, but we have to go through the basalt, which is at the top 
of the oceanic crust. And when water goes into that basalt, it turns into blue schist. Blue schist, of course, is what forms in that wet basalt as it goes down into that subduction zone underneath the continents. And as it goes deeper and deeper, the water gets released and it leaves behind eclogite. Eclogite, which is dry and heavy, and it drags that oceanic crust down deeper, deeper, pulling the slab down. Well, that water, when it gets released into the mantle, it causes melting and a big blob of magma rises up into the crust and it makes granite. There, granite from video number four. And that granite, sometimes, if you're lucky, it can have copper in it and that copper can flow in fluids and cracks through the granite and make chalcopyrite, like in our, our chalcopyrite rock, and then sometimes above the calcopyrite where those fluids are flowing, we can trigger a huge volcanic eruption. And that forms our tuff, the rock of the day, that forms those huge volcanic eruptions of tuff above the granite and above the ore with the copper. Last of all, if you remember that granite, all the feldspar, the pink inside that granite, it starts to get weathered away and eroded. And what's inside that feldspar? Potassium and sodium. And they get washed away by the streams and the rivers into the oceans. And when they get back into the oceans, that makes the water salty again, which is exactly where we started. Now that's a story. That's a story that links so many of the rocks that we've seen. Each one of those stories might have seemed like it was all by itself. But you can make a connection like I just made a volcano connection that connects any one of these rocks to the other, or to life, or to people. You have to think about those connections. Volcano connection. Volcano connection. I think there was a song. There was a song by Kermit the Frog. I remember that song. It was called The Rainbow Connection. But I think if we change the words, maybe we can end our video this way. Someday we'll find it, a volcano connection, the lava, the water, and you. Kermit the Frog. Never goes wrong. Bye-bye.